This week on CrossFeed. We see the church give away firearms. Should they also teach firearm safety? Obama is the Antichrist again? Why should the devil have all the good music? The Knights Templar go into battle. And can you say, Jesus sucks? Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, Pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. I am Pastor Jim Butler at beautiful uh, St. Luke's Lutheran Church in gorgeous Dedham, Massachusetts, where it's nice and cool and comfortable at this time of year. Well, we have air conditioning, so we're comfortable, too. Actually, this week's been pretty good. But, hey, uh, Olympics have started. Yes. I've watched about, you know, we, I've been, I was gone over the weekend. Uh, I'm on vacation. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's Sunday. We're recording this and I didn't go to church this morning. Um, I went Thursday night instead because I knew I was going to be traveling. But, um, so we've, we've watched about half of the opening ceremony. Um, haven't watched the other half. Pretty impressed with what I've seen so far. But, um, you know, it, it got me thinking. You know, because there's all this stuff about Confucianism and Taoism and, and Buddhism. And I was thinking, would, would you ever see Christianity as a major, um, emphasis in any opening ceremony in the United States? I would think so. You'd think, but okay. Uh, we just had one in Salt Lake City, which is, you know, Mormon territory. Was there anything about Joe Smith or the Mormons or anything like that in there? I I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I've never paid attention to, <laughs> to the opening Cause, ceremony. Because so. I do, and uh, you know, and I, I don't remember, you know, any kind of Christian reference in, in any of them. <laughs> and I mean, maybe I'm wrong. So if anybody, you know can remember one that um that i can't uh send us a note at a podcast at crossvnews.com but um it, you know i i was thinking about it because there was there was this one other one that i remember i want to say it was the atlanta ones but i can't remember um where they had these um uh the 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 fans blowing the the windsock people and um and the, the whole thing was really pagan. I mean, not like pagan in the sense of, of non-Christian, but I mean like pagan as in like, uh, I think they were trying to go back to the ancient Greek kind of thing and, and the, the gods and everything. And, um, and I, with that one, I kind of got done watching it and felt kind of uncomfortable and went, um, boy, you know, I know that the original Olympics were, uh, really intended as sort of a religious ceremony. Um, but are the modern ones too? <laughs> so I, I, I thought it was interesting. I, you know, I, I think it's appropriate to have when religion is a major part of, of a nation, you know, to have those elements as part of their Olympic opening ceremony when they're hosting it. But I just, you know, I, it just got me thinking, have I ever seen, you know, Christian, elements in an American or, or any other, you know, nation for that matter, uh, with a large Christian population. Uh, of course, it's interesting to me that you, you would, they would have that considering that Chinese, China is officially communist and therefore atheist, but that's another issue. Well, they're not By religions, the way, they're philosophies. <laughs> okay. That's true. By the way, I should mention that, um, Dale told me the other day that we are no longer banned in China. They, yep. they like us again. Yep. Okay, we're kosher in China again. Yeah, yeah that was, that's yeah. as of actually like end of or middle of July based on uh, some of the uh, statistics and stuff on our website. So, and in fact, yeah. we even had uh, that Eric Liddell story uh, that we talked about. Was that last time? Um, mm-hmm. We've had somebody from Beijing um, was looking up that story and, and found it on our site. I just happened to kind of stumble right. across that and go, oh, cool. <laughs> that is cool. And uh, matter of fact, I, I used uh, Eric Liddell as an um, uh, illustration of my sermon this morning. Oh, how trendy. Yeah, I know. 
I'm, I'm slick. I really timely. am. Timely. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but but I don't know if we would have a religion at the um, opening ceremonies, but maybe at the Democratic National Convention. Ah, ah as uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have may have seen the one. Now, I want to do this one first for a couple reasons. Number one, I'm really hoping that this would get some comments back. For it, uh, so, you know, uh, and this is a story off of BeliefNet. And um, so the woman said, you know, email her. So I thought it'd be fun. I'm going to email her and tell her when you tell me the podcast is up and, you know, tell her we, we talked about this on our podcast and therefore she can make some comments back to us. Uh, so we're going to start off then by showing you uh, this ad by the John McCain campaign about Barack Obama. Yep, and here it is. Be quiet and watch the film. Sorry. It should be known that in 2008 the world will be blessed. They will call him the one. A nation healed. A world repaired. We are the ones we've been waiting for. And he has anointed himself, ready to carry the burden of the world. Quote Barack, I have become a symbol of America, returning to our best traditions. He can do no wrong. Do you have any doubts? Never. Can you see the light? A light will shine down from somewhere. It will, it will light upon you. You will experience an epiphany. And you will say to yourself, I have to vote for Barack. And the world shall receive his blessings. This was the moment. Barack Obama may be the one, but is he ready to lead? <laughs> oh, man. Hallelujah, Barack. <laughs> now, the some of Barack's supporters were not real fond of this particular little talk. Uh, um, ad. Um, this woman from BeliefNet was, uh, and her name again was, what was her name? Uh, Maya, I think. Fear of a name only increases fear of the thing itself. Uh, Mara. Mara Vanderslice. Mara, Mara, Mara Vanderslice. That's it, yeah. And she found it to be, you know, one of the most offensive ads we've seen in American politics. So far, and uh, but many are reading it even more darkly as an attempt to portray Obama as an antichrist figure. And, and I really had to wonder about that one. First off, this this idea of Obama as the Messiah. This is just not John McCain. Um, I mean, I've read this in other places. Uh, the Times of London a couple of weeks ago had this uh, wonderful uh, thing uh, commentary called the Child. I don't know if you know if you if you got to see that, hmm. uh, but it you know, starts off and came to pass. The child was born of a, um, a Kenyan peasant and a typical white woman, and uh, you know the child went forth and um, you know I mean so um, so the you know he's not the only one who's, who's had this. I even read it uh, actually some 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 Hillary supporters bringing up the same thing, but I was trying to really figure out. You know, where they get this idea of, you know, this Antichrist. And I came across an article on the Wall Street Journal. And, um, uh, uh, and, uh, um, the spokesman for the John McCain, uh, campaign says, you know, sometimes he gets carried away with his, uh, audacious statements and it's a lighthearted ad that pokes fun at him, which is frankly how I took it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, some of these things is, is kind of interesting in this. Uh, uh, I mean, this one guy, his name, um, Eric Sapp, a Democratic operative, said, short of 666, they used every single symbol of the Antichrist in this ad. There are just way too many things to be coincidence. 
And I was trying to figure out what in the world did they see in this? Um, and they said that there's uh, Ohio and Pennsylvania and Colorado and Virginia. Um, it could have those kinds of suggestions. Uh, there have been Senator Obama is the Antichrist Bible study meetings in Chillicothe, Ohio, <laughs> where congregants prepare his remarks and biography of verses from the Bible. Um, you know, um, Stuart Hoover, director for the Center of Media, Religion, and Culture at the University of Colorado in Boulder, uh, said the references to the Antichrist and McCain ad were not all that subtle for anyone familiar with ap apocalyptic popular culture. Uh, some images in the ad very closely resemble the cover art and type font used in the latest Left Behind novel. The title of the ad, The One, echoes the series. The Antichrist figure, Nikolai Carpathia, sets up the one world religion. I think, I don't know, man. I thought they were reading too much into this myself. <laughs> well, you're just not familiar enough with, you know apocalyptic uh it's it's not it's not so it's not like apocalyptic literature it's like uh apocalyptic pop theology or you know something like that i don't know well, I, I not, not since i got out of it when i was in high school i mean i read hal lindsey i thought i thought hal lindsey was a prophet of god when i was in high school i'm very familiar with that so that's why i'm just trying to figure out what, what kind of imagery is there because, I mean, I've been very steeped in that stuff, so I would, you know, I would pick it up, but I didn't see it in there. Yeah. I I, I understand the the sort of where, how you could look at it and say, uh, oh, false messiah, you know. Um, I don't know at, at the same time, I, I found the whole thing rather interesting, um, just in a, a sense of... Just the, the the over the top kind of approach to things. So you mean somebody has statements, or do you mean the ad? The the ad. The it was because it it was almost like I mean this could have been an, an Obama ad where he's like making fun of all of these Obama as the Antichrist things because it was just so extreme. As a, you know, like, oh yeah, this is what people think of me, you know. And so I, I, I guess I have a hard time with people seeing this and taking it seriously and going, oh yeah, you know. I mean, like, yeah, there are, but those people probably don't leave their bunker to vote. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked at it and just, you know, I, I, it's unfortunate that he has made some pretty outrageous claims. I mean, you know, this is, you know, we look back and see this is when the, the ocean stopped, started to stop rising and the planet started to, that is, I mean, you know, it, this morning, I mean, we have, you know, with, yeah, this morning we had Jesus walking on the water. We have Jesus stealing the store. I mean, you know, the, it, it, it's, you know. Uh, or, you know, of course, my other favorite one is, you know, we are the change we've been waiting for. You know, I, 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 you know, I mean, you, you get some of these statements that are a little bit over the top, and yeah, <laughs> that's what politicians do. They go after that kind of stuff, and they have fun with it. Well, you know, this this kind of reminds me of, there's there's a whole discussion in um, uh, certain circles in the church uh in the whole church growth thing and stuff about is it appropriate to use uh, sort of uh, advertising lingo and, and advertising uh, marketing techniques and stuff like that um, in the church. Okay. Which is a discussion for another time. And actually we'll probably get into that a little bit later, but um, you know, I look at this and go, is it appropriate to use religious lingo in politics? And um, so uh, I, I just, you know, it, it seems to me it's just kind of a big parody. Yeah. Well, I, I like his thing there, too. You know, the light's going to come on and, and tell you to vote for Barack. I mean, I can see that as, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm a master of self-deprecating humor, you know. I mean, so I was, you know, 
I, I was telling Dale I did this installation today, and uh, we didn't get to bring greetings from our churches because I, I really wanted because this guy used to attend my church in, in Illinois, and I really want to say, and you were sitting out there and you were listening to me preach, and you were thinking, I could do better than him, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, that's just, you know, my kind of humor. I just, you know, and so I could, you know, um, I, I don't know, you can almost use that in a self-deprecating way, but, you know, it just sounded so, you know. Well, I like the, the other part of that quote where he says, the light's going to shine, but I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> it's coming from somewhere. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's people going, yes, the bowels of hell. You know, <laughs> it's flames. You know, so yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's a little bit of fun there. Politics are always fun. Um, I can't think of a good segue for 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 this part. Uh, should should we go into the music? Well, you talked about ads and advertising and marketing. Yep. So let's go into the. Let's go to the church war stuff here. I'm going to try resetting the, the thing back there, folks. Well, I yeah. Around acting up a bit. Hang on just a second. I'm waiting! There you go. That's better. That looks much better. I think my, uh, I, things are, are a little bit blocky from this end. Um... I, I don't know, I think it got a slow connection or something like that. Although we don't have any delays or echoes tonight, so I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, it's clearing up a little bit. I'll uh, For those who are watching the video, uh, I'll stick it at the end um, of the show so you can see a little clearer picture of it. But uh, it's for those who can't uh, see it, those who are listening to the audio or trying to figure it out, uh, what the picture is is uh, um, a video projector that has uh, wings sticking out of it, so it looks like a B-Wing fighter from Star Wars. And it is shooting at a TIE fighter, and the solar panels on the side of the TIE fighter are um, hymnals, uh, specifically the Lutheran Service Book, because that's the graphic that I had when I put this image together. Um, and in fact, the uh, uh, it's posted up at lcmspastor.com if anybody wants to use it as a uh, for illustrations or anything like that. It's uh, Creative Commons licensed, and um, it uh, I I thought it was amusing that I got a I've gotten one comment on the image, and that was why is the hymnal the bad guys and the projector the good guys? <laughs> like, because. Handles make good solar panels on a TIE fighter, you know? It's just the way it worked. Okay, I, I, I thought they thought that why is the hymnal getting shot at, you know? Well, I the, the loser here. <laughs> oh, well, either way, but I didn't pick up that imagery. But then I don't think Obama was the Antichrist either. I didn't pick up that imagery either. So, I, <laughs> you know... Unfortunately, for, Freud would have fun with me for because for me a cigar really is just a cigar. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, this is an opinion piece by and, um, Flo Johnston. Yeah, and talking about the whole issue of um, church music, and apparently she's Presbyterian, and uh, you know, and you know she is a. Um, a person who likes um, hymns. She said, uh, you know, she learned to love hymns, both words, music and words. I know dozens of them from memory. I find some of them can need to be thrilling and inspiring, like Lead On, O King Eternal. And uh, she said, on the other hand, sometimes some contemporary music um, gets a little bit repetitious and... Uh, after a while, she gets to, to be a little bit weakened by it. On the other hand, a lot of liturgical music responses, canticles, chants, employ the same technique. Mm -hmm. I thought she wrote a very fair article myself. Yeah, yeah, it was it was well balanced. You know, there's a lot of um, this is one of those issues that the Bible doesn't speak to specifically, although there are those who would claim that it does. Um, on both sides. 
And uh, it's a matter of, um, you know, which, what kind of music is appropriate for use in worship. And really, as I see it, in a lot of ways, it comes down to the question of, are we, and, and it's ironic because both of these examples are, um, are traditional, but are we a, what a friend we have in Jesus church or are we a holy, holy, holy church? You know, where do we emphasize God? And now that's not to say that you can't use, uh, uh, traditional music to, um, to emphasize that uh, sort of Jesus is our friend, um, like in the example, what a friend we have in Jesus. Um, and for that matter, you can also use uh, contemporary I'm music. Sorry, my dog is over here pushing something underneath my feet. <laughs> <So. laughs> um, you can also use contemporary music, and I've heard quite a bit of it, um, to emphasize the holiness of God. And you have songs like Our God is an Awesome God and, and things like that. So, but you know, it, it's that whole sense of, of what's appropriate for use in worship. Are you the police? No, ma'am. We're musicians. As I see it, um, I think that that you can appropriately use uh, contemporary music in worship, but it needs to first of all be good quality stuff. It can't be the sort of musical equivalent of the junk that they sell in um, in Christian bookstores. Uh, and by that, I mean, like, you take a Matchbox car and you slap a, you'd like tape a Bible verse onto it, or you use a, you know, you, you, you stick a, a label on it that says John 316, and you sell it as, oh, this is Christian merchandise. And, um, and so it, it has to be quality stuff. And, so we we very easily tend to uh, be accepting of things because they are Christian. Well, I wonder if the kids who buy those Bible action play sets ever stage a cleansing of the temple reenactment. With all your fast movements, it was uh, more impressive than the uh, the light show at the opening ceremonies because it made everything all blocky. <laughs> and so you just saw this like movement of colors. It was very artistic. <laughs> no, I have, I have a pit bull and he's um, playing with this uh, cube that's got food in it and drops it out and he's been pushing it around. He's, he somehow or other got it over here and started pushing it underneath my chair and, you know, <laughs> and telling him, take it somewhere else. He doesn't understand that. Uh, anyway, you know, when it comes down to this issue of, of, of worship, you know, I, I agree with you. I think it's always the content is always the most important thing. And um, there are there's good and bad. In, 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 well, Theodore Sturgeon, Theodore Sturgeon, of course, made the famous statement one time, 90% uh, of uh, science fiction is crap, but then 90% of everything is crap. So, I mean, that's, that's been known now as Sturgeon's Law. Um, and so when guys, you know, start talking about, you know, well, this is bad, this is bad, this song's bad, you know. Sturgeon's Law, buddy. You know, 90% of traditional hymn that he is bad. Yeah, boy, I ask my members when I pick a hymn that they don't, that, you know, even I have trouble singing it, and I'm the one that picked it out. <laughs> like a well, comments I'm afterwards. Tune, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, words particularly, but, you know, I have decided to follow Jesus. That's a horrible hymn. Um, but it is a um, traditional hymn. It's not yeah. a contemporary Christian hymn. In the Garden. In the Garden, the Andy song. <laughs> and uh, I, I still want to meet Andy. Anyhow, so, uh, but there, there, there's, there's a lot of really bad music out there. I mean, we can just simply say that. Um, and, and a lot of the stuff is repetitious. So my son was um, there at the end of his evangelical high school, and this guy was going, I don't know how you can stand to go to your church. You just say the same things over and over again. And my son turns around, looks at him, and says, "You mean a post of that song we did in chapel the other day? 
yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. You know, we're talking about it for five minutes. I saw a really cool really presentation a um, couple of years ago uh, by a, a pastor that was he, – basically his premise was that um, – now – uh, for those not familiar, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod uh, used to be completely German-speaking up until about World War One, and that's when it started transitioning over to English. Um, there was even a, uh, d- a Lutheran denomination uh, called the English Synod that wanted to be a part of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and got denied because they didn't speak German. N- well, now they are part of us, and they're called the English District. Um, but, uh, so, but he, you know, what he did is he looked at all of the arguments against, uh, switching from German to English that people were making at the time. And it was like, there's no, um, good English, uh, stuff out there that's, that has good theology. There's, um, I can't even remember all the arguments, but it was like, Every single argument that was made against switching to English, they're the same exact arguments that are used um, for you sticking with traditional hymnody instead of contemporary music. And uh, so I thought that was really fascinating just to see the the similarity there. Um, although I do think that a lot of the contemporary music, some of it is not as sad or as um, mournful as it could be. You know, I mean, you do get these things that you talk about, you know, um, the derogatory term is happy, clappy, and uh, there are some of them. So I had a friend of mine who was Baptist. He, he just got creamed by this church, just from Rona, and began this, attending an Assembly of God church. And he said, you know, he's telling me, going, you know, here we are just feeling devastated, having been, you know, his wife and kids. I mean, they're just, they're just, just you know completely feel devastated what's going on. And they're walking in there, and this place, smile and clap every, you know, and they're just, you know, let's all be happy. And he's like, how do you feel happy? You know, where are, you know, and then he started coming to our church, and he started coming at lunch, and he was like, you know, that hymn today, that spoke to me. You know, that, you know, because, you know, it was a kind of a, a minor key, mournful tune, and he said that really, you know, touched him in the pain that he was feeling at that time. Although I told my director of music the other day, I said, can we do something during Advent this year, make it a little bit more cheerful? You know, <laughs> I think Advent's be, you know, a kind of hope and, you know, you know, it's not Christmas yet, but, you know, can't we use more cheerful music, you know, and that talks about expectation, hope, and some of those hymns that are there, the chart. Oof. I don't like singing them. So, anyway... The Worship Wars continue. Hey, maybe you've got some comments, by the way, in the Worship Wars and how it plays out in your church. Uh, let us know at uh, podcast at crossfeednews.com. Yeah, we'd Always love to hear from you. Comments. Um, the other thing I'll emphasize, and, and Jim kind of um, mentioned this, and um, but I also believe uh, very firmly that the content, the the style needs to support the content, not detract from it that the message has to be the center and that whatever you're going to do in a liturgy, it needs to point to that message and, and it needs to be, Hey, listen to this message and let the message speak through the music, through the, you know, the, 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 the liturgy or whatever it is that you're using, not, Hey, what a great song. Oh yeah. It had a message too. So well, there are those hymns even that sometimes people really like to sing. And, you know, hey, that, oh, we sang one this morning. And I told the, the, the organist, yeah, that was a fun hymn, you know. It's kind of a bouncy little thing. It's, it's right out of LSB. It's a bouncy little thing and stuff. It's, I really got a kick out of that. Oh, and I had a good message, too. <laughs> um, but now you said that the, 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 the message and everything has to fit into the context of, uh, you know, what it is you're saying. And, you know, we, we want to keep that message. But what if the message is Jesus sucks? How would we bring that message across? <laughs> well, it would probably be pretty hard to do in a hymn. 
But you could, you might be able to pull it off in a contemporary song. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay we've I was, got go I, was, ahead. I was one time preaching at a um, group of guys who are studying for the studying for the ministry and uh, I did some, you know in the middle <laughs> I was asked to you know like 10 minutes before the end Jim can you do a closing devotion you know so I just kind of whipped something up real quick, you know. I was really doing this, you know, really improvising this thing and and talking about, you know, uh, God being with us in the ministry and God encouraging us in the ministry. Look, guys, guys, be honest with you. Sometimes ministry sucks. <laughs> the December office, I never learned this, looks at me and starts cracking up. I'm like, I didn't really say that, did I? <laughs> well, <laughs> you want me afterwards. He goes... Jim, you've really got to give. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. <laughs> so anyway, um, but this is a case from um, in Canada, from British Columbia, and I guess that must be Kenny Holtz there. Yep. Yeah, um, uh, Kenny Holtz, uh, who is on a, a Canadian TV show with his co-host Spencer Rice. Um. And it's the Kenny versus Spenny show. And they have these different competitions where they try to outdo each other. And um, this was a contest to see who could offend the greatest number of people. Help, help, I'm being repressed. And so this guy, Kenny, uh, took an airplane and, or I don't know, commissioned an airplane. I don't know if he actually flew it, but um, he... Flew a plane pulling a banner over Toronto that said, Jesus sucks. And so now uh, there's a guy who didn't actually see it. He just saw the news coverage of it. Uh, I'm not sure whether that matters or not, but it's I think it's important to uh, include. Um, his name is Dean uh, Skoreko. Mm -hmm. um, and he's actually not even from... Uh, he's in British Columbia. Yeah, he's in he's in Coldstream. Yeah, so 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 for you people who you know graduated from American geography schools, okay, Ontario is close to Massachusetts, and British Columbia is kind of like out by Washington State <laughs> on the other side of the continent. <laughs> okay, Toronto is you know not too far from Buffalo, where the Bills play. So if you know where the Bills play, it's that area, you know, not where Seattle plays. That's that's closer to. <laughs> you know, sometimes I amaze even myself. So, so yeah, this guy is not from. You I know, am really going to get in trouble for this week, aren't I? <laughs> well, <clears throat> you ought to know. You're the professor. So. <laughs> So, um, yeah, this guy says, uh, uh, Dean, uh, the guy that's suing him, uh, says, my Christian beliefs and upbringing were publicly ridiculed. And so he, um, <clears throat> filled out a, an online form with the British Columbia Human Rights Tribunal. So, I'm not exactly. He was wanting to make. A point that the human rights tribunal system applies double standards favoring only minority interests. So this is a this is kind of a, a, a weird situation because on the one hand, you know, you kind of look at this and you go, "Oh, whatever, freedom of speech. The guy's got a right if he wants to fly that, and we all have the right to ridicule him for doing it." You know, and uh, in the United States, you do. Well, well, this is true. You know, freedom of speech is a little bit different in Canada than it is in the United States. Um, and they've got all these. Because I guarantee you, if he had, uh, uh, I mean, but he, when I read that and said, you know, he wanted to find, for, you know, who's going to offend the most people, I thought, well, why don't you try printing the Muhammad cartoons? Then you'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. putting on one of those on a banner. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. And the thing is, this guy's got a point because that would probably be considered hate speech. It would be. So, I mean, there's already, I know, pastors in Canada that are just a little bit nervous about the fact that they preach that, uh, for instance, homosexuality is sin. And, um, <laughs> and they're just kind of waiting for someone to come and tell them, uh, you got to stop saying that it's hate speech, you know, not that they're, uh, trying to promote, uh, you know, violence or, or anything like that. It's, you know, generally the message also, uh, says something a lot about, uh, you know, we, we still need to love these people and, and, you know, the whole point of pointing out sin is to bring people to repentance and salvation. So it's to help them, not to hurt them. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, so the guy's got a point about the, the double standard and, uh, but you know, I don't know. Is, is this one of those deals where, um, people kind of make a mountain out of a molehill just in order to make a point? That was pointless. Well, yeah, I, I, but I see, I'm really, I think I'm not so sure he's really doing this. I'm reading this, read the story so much, you know, really to silence this guy. It's really, he is to make this point about what's, what's going on here. Uh, cause, there, cause there's other cases up there. I mean, it's a great, great system, by the way, because the government pays for your complaint. If, if you get hauled into court, you gotta pay your own defense costs. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't cost you anything to complain. I mean, to me, if you ask me, this is, a, this is a system that's right for, uh, uh, that's just right for abuse. Yeah. Yeah, in, uh, because, uh, in, in, what is it, Germany at least, uh, it's the other way around. If you wanna, um, if you wanna complain about someone, if you wanna sue somebody, uh, if, I'm trying to remember how this works, I was talking to a guy that lives in Germany, and I, somebody can correct me on this if, if, if I've got this wrong, cause it's been a while. But basically, um, you need to, if, if you're upset about something that somebody did, you need to prove um, that, you know, that it was actually, uh, worth suing them over. And if you are wrong, then you automatically have to pay the other guy's court costs. I think I'd read that myself someplace. Yeah. That, that, that there's a requirement in that. Yeah. If, uh, it goes against you that, uh, or it's found to be frivolous, you have to. So, I mean, in my mind, you know, the, now, Coming from uh, a United States American, I don't know if I had a Canadian remind me going. We're all part of America. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, uh, as part of this, you know, United Statesian concept with you know the absoluteness of, of free speech. We're living in a dictatorship. I would tell him I'm not offended. You know, you're being a jerk. Uh, you know, you have a right to be a jerk. I have a right to tell you you're a jerk. You're an idiot. You're ugly, too. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You know Your we, mother wears combat boots. We, we, we always talk about the, you know, sort of separated at birth. This guy totally looks like, uh, what's his name, Jeffrey... Um, um, Dahmer? <laughs> no, no the, the guy from, um, um, from Jurassic Park did the Macintosh commercials. What's his name? Uh, uh, it, it, the fly. Um, in the oh, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, 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 him. See, I think he kind of looks like him. So, for those of you listening to the audio, just just picture Jeff Goldblum wearing shades and um, kind of younger and um, and thinner and. Uglier. <laughs> I'm trying to offend him. So anybody wants to send this to him. Remember, it's Kenny versus Fenny in Canada. I'm sure you can find them on the internet. Send them our podcast. Let them know. I think he's ugly. <laughs> I want to offend him. This is my opportunity. Kenny, I'm trying to offend you. Is it working? <laughs> the thing is, these guys, you know, 
they've got a bit of a sense of humor and, um, you know, I, I'm sure that they'd either get a kick out of it or go, is that the best you can do? <laughs> Probably. Well, that's what I would say about your offense. Is that the best you can do? You can, I'll tell you what, really, Kenny, take my advice. Publish the Muhammad cartoons. Put them on a big banner outside your uh, studio. Huge one. You will, <laughs> you will offend people all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Use it as a background for your show. Like we did one time. We got a lot of traffic on that show, too. In fact, that was the episode for you. If anybody wants to go back and, and see it, uh, the audio wasn't real great on that one. Um, but uh, it's our most viewed show on like all the different uh, sites. And it's the one that where the, the title of it is I-O-W-A. <laughs> because Jim was trying to get me killed. <laughs> Now, so, Kenny, if you want to offend people all over the world, that's how you do it. We know. We've done it. It's also how you get ratings. <laughs> that's right. We know. But that'll help to probably get you hauled before the Human Rights Commission. And it. Then you can help this guy make his point. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about a uh, church down in Oklahoma that, uh, or this youth festival, is going to give away a uh, AR-15 uh, assault rifle, and didn't because at the last minute the senior pastor didn't show up to give uh, shooting lessons. Well, now we found out that there is this is it's uh, one of the odd related story. Uh, a company in um, uh, out of uh, Las Vegas called Front Sight. Uh, I guess this must be, this really seems like, like a news release or something like that, reading it. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, because it's from Market Wire. So, uh, but the fire, uh, um, the Front Sight Firearms Training Institute, and um, <clears throat> they will come to your church. Well, what they'll do is if you buy four memberships, to learn to shoot correctly, they will give one free. So you buy four memberships, you give them to your church, and they will give a fifth one to your church for free. Now keep in mind, these memberships cost $6,900. To, it's a lifetime membership. But if you, membership. Buy, but, 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 uh, uh, if you buy four of them, uh, you get uh, 4900 for all four memberships. Yeah. So, good deal. What a deal. <laughs> <laughs> the idea here is that this is uh, after the the shootings in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, that you know, there's the, they're saying, "Well, here, see, you can um, you can train your members so that if something would happen, uh, you know, somebody comes into your church shooting up the place, then you can uh, you know you can return fire." <laughs> Now, now the picture doesn't want to come up. I don't know why not. I'll, I'll try reinstalling it to see if it come up. Personally, you know, now, now I like the way this guy reads. This guy, this guy, I just love his um, thing here. He says, so, "I would like nothing more than to train every pastor, minister, priest, and rabbi uh, in the in the in, in the county to a level of skill with a handgun that exceeds law enforcement standards." I don't know, man. You know, you 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 you, you got a picture of the church. This is from this Presbyterian Church deal, and which is an okay picture. But I really thought you need a picture of Clint Eastwood as Dirty Harry <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a clerical collar. Come on, punk! Make my day. I can see you, Dale, saying this in the pulpit. You know, just, 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 this. just pulling the handgun out. You feel a, you feel a grace filled punk. <laughs> The problem here, though, is that you've got four of your members are trained, too. So which four of our members should I train to be a sharpshooter so that they don't like something I preach about? Bam! <laughs> In that case, I shot to kill you. How dare you say that? <laughs> yeah, you see, now Dale was on vacation today, so he had a guest pastor. I can just imagine, like, look, man, you got to preach good. These people... <laughs> These people are packing heat. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, given that I, I started looking for somebody to sub for me like two weeks ago, um, it was a bit of a late notice and a little bit of a putting things off on my end. I, I had a hard enough time finding guys to fill in for me. Um, <laughs> tell, tell them, um, <laughs> make sure you wear your Kevlar, um, <laughs> alb. <laughs> I think I would have had a little harder time finding someone to fill in. What do I think? I think kill it. Just make sure that all is in the proper liturgical color. You want your, you your green Kevlar this month. <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing... You want to wear the chasuble. Trust me on this one. No, Don't bring your own. Wear the one that's hanging in the sacristy. Yes, it's a little heavy. Don't worry about it. It's supposed to be. It's for your protection. No, no, no. no. Cloth chasuble's fine. It hides the Kevlar body armor. <laughs> under so, you know. <laughs> I sp- you know, the, the alb's kind of loose. Um depending how tight you tie your cincture, you know, and and uh so so you could you could conceal that under there pretty well. <laughs> you can't hide from them. <laughs> I don't know. I, anybody out there, um, you know, wonder what the pastor's hiding up in the pulpit? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a gun up there? Or are you glad to see me? <laughs> Darn it, Jim! <laughs> ah, don't do that! Next story, we're done with that one. And now for something completely different. <sighs> Speaking of weaponry. You know, I was going to say something about the sword of the spirit versus, you know, other other kinds of of weapons, but that's gone. <laughs> So, how did he compose myself? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. If you have comments, you can send them to podcast at crossfeednews.com. Attention, Jim. Boy, no control. I think we had a bad influence on her. It's been a long weekend, folks. I've had a funeral, a wedding, services, a church installation of the church, and I am just a little bit slap happy over here. So, <clears throat> but uh, just remembered me West. All of a sudden, jumped in my mind there. Uh, yes. Well, let's talk here about the. the <laughs> this is an interesting little story about the Knights Templar, which may or really may not really exist. Well, th- you know, that's the problem. All right. Well, first of all, here's the story. All right. The Knights Templar are um, suing the Vatican for $100 billion. Or euros. Or, I'm sorry, euros, which is worth a whole lot more. That's true. That's why I wanted to mention that. <laughs> and uh, they are... They want... To, they want the Vatican to give them back their good name and um, possibly billions of assets in the bargain. It was uh, basically for those not familiar, um, you know, go read the Wikipedia article. It's, it's well done. Yeah. Um, but it, however, the, 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 the key thing here is that um, <clears throat> the Knights Templar who uh, would order or warrior monks, uh, credited with possessing the Holy Grail and really laying the foundation for the European banking system, was completely smashed in 1307 by Pope Clement V and Philip IV of France. Burned, more specifically. Right. Totally destroyed. Uh, uh, but now, 700 years later, <laughs> this group is saying shows up and says, we want uh, our money back that you stole from us. 
some hundred years ago. Now, how do you prove that you're in any way associated with a group that was around 700 years ago? Well, that's the problem, because the group was obliterated. And all of a sudden, you have this group come back that says, oh, yeah, that's us. And there have actually been a few different groups that claim to be the successors uh, to this organization. Um, you know, the the group at the time, they were, everybody was either um, burned at the stake or else um, they were told to join one of the other, the Knights uh, Hospitalis, uh, which was a sort of rival uh, Christian knight order. And um, and the, that group also got all of their assets. So if anything, you think that they'd have to go after the Knights Hospitalis, um, not the Vatican, but it was under the Vatican's orders. So, but of course we know the Knights Templar really, you know, survived, you know, Leonardo da Vinci was part of them. And, you know, read Da Vinci, but you'll find the real story. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, if you go to, if you go, um, you know, uh, to this one, the Knight Templar in England and Wales, so on their website, it says, please don't expect to be enlightened with some supposed secret knowledge because nothing exists. That's what you'd expect them to say. <laughs> This is just all a smokescreen. Really exists. They've got the hundred billion euros. It's kind of like that. <laughs> the um, I thought it was interesting. The the number of of different people that have claimed to be successors or to have, you know, even the um the York Rite of of the Masons uh, claim to be. Uh, successors and 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 things like that, and um, those guys have enough money to actually pull a lawsuit. But I mean, everybody wants. I mean, it's this sort of romantic group. They're they are knights that fought in the Crusades, and you know, and and um, did all these these uh, good works and and things like that. And and uh, you know, they're kind of famous. And and so like oh yeah that's us yeah yeah you know I'm part of that you know like, uh, sorry buddy Our buddy Kenny Kenny new way to offend people <laughs> <laughs> go to the middies tell them you're part of the Knights Templar you are part of the Crusaders you're the part of what the organization that continues to exist to this day you will offend lots of Muslims that way <laughs> you will, you will win I guarantee you this, 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 no no fear deal. Kenny yeah, it's part of the Knights yeah. Templar, folks. Learn that. You'll probably get locked up, too. <laughs> in the funny farm. <laughs> okay, buddy. I'm not crazy. That's it, Kenny. But you can also stand up and say you want your 100 billion euros back. <laughs> then you offer that. I only help the Muslims, but all the Catholics, too. You <laughs> can <laughs> Jim's had a really long weekend. <laughs> He's been very busy. This it shows. Is polar diet dry orange juice. That's all that this is. It's an orange soda. It's nothing in here. No vodka or anything. No, he's naturally like this. <laughs> I really am. It's very scary. <laughs> so this is a the, is an interesting story. It's uh, it, it's I think, but I, I honestly I think that the real history of the organization is a whole lot more interesting. Um, uh, just the, all the, the politics and stuff that led to their demise. And, um, you know, that these people were, were forced to, uh, to confess all this different stuff under torture, um, that none of them really 
you know, they're claimed to have been involved in demon worship and all kinds of stuff. And heresy, sodomy. Yeah. So uh, the most interesting thing was uh, if you've ever heard the the name uh, Baphomet, um, which is a, a demonic name that shows up in a lot of satanic literature and stuff. Um, it was most people figured that the name first showed up during this whole uh, Knights Templar trials and stuff like that, and they're supposedly worshipped this this thing that uh turns out it was actually a mis uh a mistranslation or a misspelling of Muhammad. <laughs> so when you consider the you know the Crusades and Islam and everything, the name showed up and was misunderstood apparently. So I had never heard that one before. Neither had I until I started clicking links on the Wikipedia article. <laughs> cool. I was checking out Wikipedia today. I was clicking links on the Pulp Hero Back Savage. So <clears throat> maybe that explains a lot about me, folks. So maybe you don't like my thinking, or maybe I managed to offend you tonight. Maybe you got other ideas that how Kenny can offend people. Just <laughs> so I think you have to go to beat me. Let us know at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Is Barack Obama really the Messiah? Let us know. Podcast at crossfeednews.com. So, uh, that's all we have for tonight. Uh, we better quit now, huh? <laughs> and, Before I lose it again. Uh, yeah. so, good night, everybody, and God bless. Good night. God bless.